Um, I forgot to do that. Now we have okay. the recording on. Thank you, Nan. Go ahead. Sure. So, um, so uh, working with people with food insecurity, so there's a big push towards um, getting local local foods to local places. Um, so locally grown stuff. Unfortunately, a lot of the food grown in this county is for livestock and not so much for consumption. Um, mm -hmm. But there is some here and there. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping to put together a map to help me orchestrate the whole the whole thing. Great. And I know Brett brought you into this. Brett, do you want to go next? You're mute. Yeah, thank you. I'm delighted to see that the connection coming together. I mean, Wendy and I have known each other for quite a long time, and we're part of an accelerator in New York City, and we worked together on a, a food project in Jersey City, um, which was about bringing um, gardens to the city, to empty lots, and uh, restoring some of the jurisdictions or wards of the city that had food deserts. So really, really working to bring fresh food into places where uh, residents really couldn't buy them. Um, and so that's kind of what brought us together and all these years we've been sort of connected and uh, I recognize the opportunity with um, here in Pennsylvania. So we've made that connection. That's great. And Brett is currently on a t uh, design systems teacher at the new school. Parsons Parson School of Design. Great. And uh, Diane, do you want to go next since you're part of the Central Pennsylvania Connection or Western Pennsylvania Connection? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean me? Yeah. Uh, I'm Washington State. You're in so Washington State. I'm oh, in Washington State, Jefferson County. Excuse me. Okay. One of the gardens I manage, Mary, I, 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 co I coordinate is one of that Mary manages. Um, so I have, we have 12 gardens in the Jefferson County of Washington State, and we all grow food, most of us specifically for the food bank. We've got some that feed into other organizations as well. Um, they feed into the school district, they feed into a place called Recovery Cafe, um, and one of them is starting to feed into a cancer program where they deliver CSAs to cancer patients. So we're really about getting fresh, organically grown produce out into the community to the people that really need it. That's really terrific. That's great. Um, we'll wait and have Mary introduce herself in a moment, but Ali, um, um, Ali Yuska, can you introduce yourself? It may not work, but I'll tell you, I met Ali Yuska when she was running a mangrove um, nursery. So she is a biologist and her partner is Liana, who's just coming on um, in Cuba, where, um, do you want to say something, Eliuska? No, uh, Liana is coming. Liana is coming, okay. <laughs> so, ah, then uh, the, uh, she told everything. Okay, so, uh, okay. We'll, okay, we'll wait till she comes. How about you, Luisa? Okay. Why we're waiting for Liana. Okay, 30 seconds, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I live in um, the Hudson Valley of New York, and um, I've always been interested in food systems um, since I, um, um, I took a graduate degree in library science, and I had a research um, class where um, I was asked to um, research an industry, and I... Um, and I did the food industry, and that's where I learned all about the distribution systems and the logistics of that. And so when I moved upstate to New York, it was very easy for me to um, sort of start to see how, um, you know, the food system up here worked, and, and, and especially a sort of a, a growing um, social justice food network. So I'm currently volunteering um, with an outfit that sounds really similar to NAMS um, in Western Pennsylvania. Um, it's called the Columbia County Recovery Kitchen. And uh, food insecurity is, is you know, pretty big in this country, county, but there's also a lot of um, 
new farmers and um, alternate um, regional food systems going on. So, um, you know, I'm very interested to, um, you know, do a green map uh, around food insecurity in this area. So thanks for having me, Wendy. Terrific, terrific. Yes. How about you, Michelle? You're muted, though. Not a good start. <laughs> um, I was living in Brighton, which is about a 20 minute drive from here for about five years. And I was, I still am part of the Brighton and Hove Organic Gardeners Association. And it's got quite a clout. It's been going for many years and they linked in with the Brighton and Hove Food Partnership, which shows people how to cook, how to grow, um, and with the Brighton Hope Organic Gardening Group, I helped organize a community center garden for people who just needed to have little extra things in one of the more deprived areas. And there was a food fridge for uh, surplus. I'm now not living there and I'm in a new place which has a different demographic. So I'm still trying to get something off of the ground, although we do have a green map and I'd be I really would like to look at a community garden that's also very ecologically minded so that it's not anthropocene. It's not based around human needs. Oh, interesting. That's the only thing. It's also interspecies. So it's mm -hmm. making people think in a community garden in a very holistic way. If you didn't pick up on it, Michelle is south of London in the UK. Um, so, um, and um, she made the first interactive green map back in 1997, and we just reconnected mm -hmm. recently. So there's yeah, some it's lovely. <laughs> and right the next year, I met Liana Bedart in Cuba, and um, she's now living in Italy, but still very much working with Mapa Verde Cuba. Liana. Um, do you want to say something this morning? Ooh. Afternoon. Um, um, uh, my name is Liana uh, from Cuba. Uh, the Green Map of Cuba working about a uh, jar um, family and um, garden scholar, a school garden, a school mm -hmm. garden. And um, uh, we are. Um, interest and learn about your experience. Excuse me, bad English. <laughs> I know. And, Liana, don't, please don't worry, because we know that we can get a transcript from this whole thing in Spanish, and hopefully <laughs> it can be helpful for lots of people. But together with Aliuska and an Aliuska. incredible team of women, their project has reached all across Cuba, 40 communities involved, and it became part of the school system many years ago there. So Mapa Verde Cuba is, especially on Facebook, you can see current activity, lots of reporting, lots of great work. So thank you for coming. And I'll introduce Mary Hunt, who's up in the Northwest corner of the US and um, doing incredible work with food. So take it away, Mary. <laughs> Hi, um, I have a, a first slide that kind of shows everything that I do up here. But basically I'm a creative that's retired and looking for a project. And I want my last project for my life to be all surrounded around food and how you grow it, how you appreciate it, um, getting more people eating nutrition, nutritious food in their area, whatever is local and uh, sharing it with others. So you build community through sharing food. And that's pretty much what drives me. That's great. I'm Wendy, great. I'm the director of Green Map. I'm thrilled to be here today. And I'm gonna start with a little bit of introduction since some of us have not been to a Green Map thing before. And oh, here, let me put this into slideshow mode. Um, and, oh, there we go. So um, this is a, now we're coming up on like, you know, 27 years of being able to work together with people around the world, all of whom are using the tools and 
um, icons and things we've created in ways that meet people where they are in their own local community. So the process always starts with thinking about who is the map for, and then working to frame your map around uh, engaging and exciting and activating that particular audience. But um, we've worked with governments, nonprofits, all kinds of school groups, and lots of community groups. Um, and what we do here in New York is we collect back people's outcomes, and those help us create new tools and strategies that we share with other people. So this has always been a very collective think and way to work together. Um, and many of these pro products have been co-created. For example, the book Mapping Our Common Ground was created with Liana and her team in Cuba, also Canadian and Brazilian map makers. Um, questions anytime are welcome, of course. Um, what brings it all together are the green map icons. So this set of icons is now 170 symbols around nature, culture, social justice, and green living. And nobody uses all of them. And people also create local icons. And that many of times they've appeared on print maps, but now we have a mapping platform where you can add your own local icons as well. So these things help us, uh, help people immediately understand what a site is all about, but also help good ideas that are working in one place get transferred to another. So um, here, oh, stop. Sorry. Um, where are we here? Let me go back to my screen. I don't know if you could see it, but I can't. If you could, if I could jump in for a second, Mary, could you share your email address in the chat? She will. Okay. Um, sometimes you can't see the chat when you have the um, shared screen, but it'll come. We can share everybody's afterwards too. That might be the easiest. Um, anyhow, oops, I forgot to change the top line, but I changed the icons. So they're all about uh, food. And these are some of the symbols that everybody can use on their map and you can get the gist pretty quickly um, that we include not only uh, you know where you can go for an organic dinner but also where's the food bank so we're really interested in all aspects of food and farming and food security um, this is um, just a few of the ways people have used those icons besides on the map so all kinds of engagement people have made rubber stamps and t-shirts exhibits all sorts of things to spread understanding of what the icons are about. Hmm. Um, we have made a draft set of food icons and it's hard to see it on this screen, but if we later we can go to greenmap.org slash local food and you can see each icon and its definition and comment on them. And we have a, a little survey set up. We're really trying to complete this and you may see them things that we don't have on this list, um, but you also might say, gee, um, here's some things we haven't thought about yet that we can do with our food project. So we'll come back to that at the end of this. One of our 2023 goals is to say these are done. So <laughs> we hope we'll get feedback from everybody. And, um, you know, you could see them a little bigger here. We really tried to think, um, about a lot of things. These have been in development quite a while, but we all know there's new things coming up all the time with food and farming um, in the local context. Even something that Michelle said that she's growing for non-humans or non-anthropocentrically. And does that mean it's mm -hmm. a pollinator garden rather than a um, edible landscape or something? So <laughs> we also created in 2020 a set of recovery icons. And I put on the side the symbols that relate to food. And it's pretty much a repeat of what we have on, 
some of them in the, the food set. But I just wanted you to know this is available for you too if you want to talk about public health, recuperation, and regeneration. So here in New York City, um, I'm so lucky that I'm part of a, uh, the founding of a community garden where some food is grown, including some for animals. Our community gardens in New York are all almost all part of the Green Thumb program, and that's a city parks department. They own the land. They provide the water, the wood chips, the compost, every... I'm, you can ask for almost anything and sooner or later you'll get it from them. It's a terrific organization and it knows how to manage gardens that are autonomous. Each garden is, has a separate leadership and um, makes its own rules. And as long as they comply with some of the basics from the time you get that sign up on your fence forward, you can do what you like. And it's pretty wonderful <laughs> for the gardeners. Um, Lots of different kinds of classes are offered by the Green Thumb program as well. And um, the gardens have become places of memorial and music and celebration. And um, even uh, that's our Congress, past Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. She's coming to announce a new act in our one of our community gardens. The pigs, oh, also beekeeping. That's my husband at the top. Uh, with oh. <laughs> and on the bottom is a local um, urban farm. This is on Governor's Island. I got to work there during the some uh, during 2020, and we grew a soup kitchen garden there. And the goal was um, as much food as possible, so we grew a lot of greens. It's terrific. Um, now we're coming up to the mapping platform, and this is Mary's map, and I've marked on the map, also you can see on the right, where she's located, and I guess it's Mary and Diane are both up in this neck of the woods, and um, this is one of the maps made on our mapping platform, which Mary's going to tell you about in detail in just a moment. I thought I'd show you a couple other food maps that are on the platform. This one is from Scotland and um, Southwest Villages. This is part of a program created to help um, the former coal communities um, thrive. And it was made by Enid. She's down on the lower right. I got to see her a couple years ago in Scotland. She had already been working on print maps with very diverse members of the community. And a lot of times those maps put biodiversity and native plants first. So it, it's been very interesting to see this program evolve. Um, another from um, Scotland last year, you can hear about using campaigns. And here's this is, shows you how Glasgow created eight different campaigns. They're basically small surveys to encourage people to add more sites to their map. So it, this is something you'll be able to make for your map as well. They ended up with a couple hundred sites collected this way by having people break down, by having this breakdown easy, as Mary says, verticals for that help people collect sites for the maps. And, um, whoops, and that during the, uh, climate conference, which was in the fall of 2021, these big, this graphic, you could see it all over the city popping up on screens. There was also a green map pick of the day that was posted on the um, daily news blast. And they did a lot to get the project out in front of the public who is there. And there are people from all over the world. So our platform has lots of advantages. Mary's gonna tell you about more of them. But what I like about it is you can create as many maps as you wanna. So you could even, and because you could put a site on more than one map, you could have one that's just farmer's markets, and then you could have another one that shows the farmer's markets alongside all kinds of other things. You can put on points, lines, or areas. So you can map bike routes, you can map historic zones, and you can include photos and sounds with any of them. Um, you can mix icon sets. So you can have 
our general set, you can have a custom set that you've made, and you can have a food icon set as well. Um, you can also adjust your team. So you may have different people working on different maps who have different rights to edit and change what's on the map depending on their level of, 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 man, of, uh, of team, <laughs> I'll say. So uh, just to wrap up, it's nice you can import existing data and you can also export the data so you can use it different ways could be for reporting or for spreadsheet uh, for um, all kinds of spreadsheets and things. We use the open street map. So this is a copyright free uh, open map of the world. And there's different base maps you can choose. If you have a, a base map, you can put it in. Um, and it might be historic map and show a different view of what's the, than what's there today. This is all open source and it's free for non-commercial use. You can um, hire our team to help you strategize, train people, et cetera, but that's up to you. And all of this is a web app. So it works on any device. So you can use it on your phone or your desktop or your laptop. So um, I know that's a lot already. <laughs> But let's see where we are. Oh, just to let you know, even kids can figure it out. So these fourth graders in Israel, um, every child took part in um, making of a green map there. And there, one of the interesting things for us is the mayor got excited about what the kids found lacking. What did we need? And they, the mayor funded um, three of the projects fully and 10 more projects were seed funded. So that was about $150,000 that went towards what the children found, put on their wish list. And you're not limited to a small area. And I just wanted to show you the lighthouse green map that was made in the UK. And, but people all around the world put lighthouses on that use the same um, lens. So it's the chance uh, lens that is represented all over the world on um, these lighthouses. So it's very adjustable and can be used in a, in a relatively simple way. So, um, oh, I was gonna show you a couple print maps. And this one is from Michigan. This was made by a group of nuns uh, that work especially on food security issues. We love the food desert icon they made. And so that concentric circle shows you the area where there's the most difficulty in accessing food. Um, here's two from, um, on the top, it's from Victoria. When they started their green map up in Canada, they brought out a board and asked people to put on their tree where they don't want the fruit. So cherries, apples, plums, et cetera, were collected by a gleaning group and then redistributed to the food banks and also um, products were made such as uh, vinegars, quince jam, things like that. Uh, and on the bottom is the San Francisco green map, which included all of Northern California and especially focused on food access. So um, people have been working, here's one of the groups from Cuba and maybe Liana knows people there. <laughs> But you can see it's, you don't need to have uh, fancy materials. You don't have to have printing in order to have a successful green map project. It's really all about the people, the sharing of ideas, the sharing of knowledge, building together a new perspective on place. Um, and uh, kids have made all kinds of great things with this concept and for them, it connects them to home in a way that can be very powerful. So I hope that some of you will be able to include young people in your work or even help them make their own thing. Okay, we're on to Mary and we're back to Washington State. So I'm gonna stop my share and um, Mary can take it away unless somebody has a quick question. Oh, she's taking it away. Go for it, Mary. Okay. It's a, a great segue. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are just like, wow, that's a lot. How do you begin to take all that information and take um, out of 100 talking points, you need 10. So which 10? 
So I kind of went through that last year. That was a big, or this is actually three years ago when I started pre-COVID. Actually, I got started with the whole idea of um, working with the wellness project, the JCCWP, Jefferson County Community Wellness Project, because they're doing basically all of what she was talking about, trying to figure out how the whole community can get better by growing their own food. I'm also a garden manager, um, so I'm a map maven. I do the um, plant propagation now. I develop recipes. I do all that kind of stuff to kind of bring this together. And um, that's me with my first parsnip I've ever grown in my life, so I'm very excited. <laughs> so <clears throat> to make this simpler, all the stuff she showed you, you're coming down to basically three things. You're identifying your user group, either by yourself or a whole group of people. You're identifying what information they need to know. And then you're going to create, this is the important part, the spreadsheet and the way of putting this together logically while she's doing all the social aspect of the engagement. I'm, I'm focused on the logic. And then how to get that onto the map. So our approach was to, I looked at this as a marketing hat on, um, what do we want to do first? And then what do we want to do the, for the future? So it's nice to put things out there for climate change, but we have people who are in need right now. So that's why the focus on the food bank growers, we grow, gather, give food and all the security touch points that we have around there. The schools are the next generation of foodies, get them excited and how they grow their own food and preserve it, but mostly, mostly enjoy it and share it with others. I mean, around Port Townsend, giving jars of food back and forth to each other. We all have jars from each other in our cupboards right now. And it's just a lovely thing to have happen. And then long-term is food security. This is more or less a pilot program. We have the food, we already have five different uh, food banks. And so those are the distributor centers and the schools. And so we have a little of everybody kind of working together. And if we had to blow that up, we could scale it up pretty darn easy at this point. So who, why the food mat system, um, you just kind of saw how we focused in. We looked at the whole community first, which is the number one thing people were interested in we, on your survey. So you had your farms, your restaurants, wineries, those are all dot coms. You're doing business to consumers on that. Or the government that's top down, they're gonna issue a policy and voila, it's gonna happen. And then the schools, gleaners, food banks. We are concentrating on the schools, the gleaners and the food banks, because first of all, very few people actually see the work that is being done in the schools. Anything that's nonprofit is, tends to be overlooked. But in our group last year, the food bank growers we had, or not last year, the year before, 36,000 pounds of food that were distributed. That's a lot of food for a little peninsula of 9,000 people to get out to a lot of other people. And we have those systems kind of put together. The other thing is, is we're trying to make the intangible tangible. Again, this is volunteer effort that normally goes sight unseen. The paper doesn't cover it, you know, little spots of things here and there, but nobody really sees it. So we're trying to make that so everybody can. And then as far as a team formation, <clears throat> with that group, you make a list of Okay, who are the groups in there that we'd want to get to? Teachers, students, um, foundational money people, who are the gleaners, you know, who are the people out there that would want to be on a team? Okay, that was a really good idea until COVID happened, <laughs> right at the beginning of the grand idea. <laughs> so that shut down everything because I really wanted to go to the schools first and make this a school thing. And everybody was just schools were closed down. Nothing was going on. I was all hyped up. So I thought, well, I'll just kind of get this going. And meanwhile, Green Map was coming, just coming into open source. So it was going through a lot of changes at the same time. Now it's settled into a very strong platform that isn't changing. So that was good. Now it's, we're ready for our next rendition to take it to that engagement part. So we're kind of cart horsing this the, um, backwards. So as an individual person, I have to do what <clears throat> you're doing collectively, and that's look at one site at a time, but how many maps can it go on? And I was focused on the, um, um, over here for the wellness project and getting those hundred or so places that's anything that had to do with the school, I wanted on there. And that way I didn't conflict when with other maps going on, the Eat Local First map, which was strictly a business to consumers. And then once that was made, that site was made, it took me, I will tell you right now, 18 minutes to make the map on the left, because all I had to do is put all those sites on a new map and I was done. That's the beauty of this. If you think it through first, <laughs> it becomes really robust. Come on, it's not going down. There we go. So getting into that, we have location, snapshot, overview. It, this is where your brain basically melts down unless you kind of put it into some logical format. 
that location button, the primary button, which icon are you going to put there? How are you defining these different areas? And that takes a little thinking through, and that's that group section will be thinking through that part. Next, and there's a little snapshot. When it pulls up, you can see the icons coming up first. So again, you have to kind of look that through in that first paragraph, which also shows up on the overview sheet. So you want to see that following through. And I take the overview sheet and I try to make it just evergreen information so I wouldn't be maintaining this more than once a year, maybe for new phone numbers or emails or something like that. But things that change every day, just link that over to the websites themselves and let the people managing those sites keep that fresh. And that way you stay. It's a very simple way to get more and more and more information, but you're not in the maintenance group. You're in the let's show this around group. So how do you do that? Well, I did the reverse on it. I did um, made a list of all the um, the gardens that are out there, the icons I wanted to use, if we need them or not, uh, whatever the first primary is going to be. And then the opening blurb and kind of a bullet point list of logically, chronologically going through what people are going to see. And where that is important, again, from a marketing point of view, you don't wanna have all these different dots showing up with lots of different ways the information is presented because your brain melts down. You want to see kind of, you want to know that if you're looking for um, a garden address, you want to know that you go to that dot, you go to the bottom, you'll find the address. So every time you open up a new dot, it you can't do this totally consistency, but if you can get there like 50% or 80%, that's really going to help the user be able to use the map um, faster and won't feel overwhelming to them. And it won't be overwhelming to you. So you have that first page, all that information goes on the first page. And once you have that collected, then you have a partial page that automatically picks it up. And then you have the, that little mini snapshot, which automatically picks it up. And you have a photo caption that automatically gets picked up. As long as you fill out that first page, you know what you're doing, the rest falls into place. Then at this point, you can hand it off to a map maker and they can load it up on the map itself. Now, in tandem with this, this is the other thing I started kind of going crazy on because we were just forming all these different, um, uh, uh, what do I say, the, uh, the icons themselves and getting them on there. I, the set came so, into being midway through your project, right? Correct. And, and so we had to, I had to have a way of putting down on the left-hand side, all the different locations and then noting which one of the dots were going to be, or the icons was going to be my primary dot, and what are the other ones that are going to be on there. You can always switch them around. So if you make it a primary, but you go, oh, it's really, I want my greenhouse to be a primary, you just switch, pull that one to the front, and now that's the primary. So that's a good part of that. But at least this way, you can have it, again, at a glance, you can see all the people that you have on there and how things are stacking up. So you can change things around very easily instead of, again, going crazy and wondering, did I do that? Didn't I do that? You know, does everybody agree on this? It just is kind of just seeing it at a glance makes it easier. Okay, now here's a new secret sauce that also was not available when we first started this. That's why I went to Excel and to, um, for the icon list and also the other. Now, uh, Wendy's calling it, instead of campaign, is with the name that is seen around on green map, but snap to map. That's really what's happening here. And instead of having just a team putting a map together, you have maybe hundreds of citizen mappers like they did in Glasgow putting the map together. And they'll be like, um, send out an email where you say, put, put on a picture. And there might be 10 touch points or 20 touch points that you want the citizen mapper to put on their little map that they their their spot they fill that out someone else looks it over before it goes live that's an option or it could go live but at least now you can do crowdsourcing of these maps and kind of jump start it you can have your team go back and fill in the blanks later on with more information that they want in each place but this is a way to get over the the real basic kind of information and that's why that that's a little bit more important. And I haven't had a lot of experience in this one, except one teacher who decided he wanted to map out the American, uh, Amer sorry, American chestnut, which is a rare tree over here, to capture um, trees that provide food and had the, the kids go out and map those trees. And I okay. can show that to you if you want more about that. Okay. Go ahead. All right, so I'm gonna switch over now here and stop share on this and, oops. Escape out of that, go over to, where's my other thing? Here we go over here. 
Oh. I have to share screen again. I'm, I'm going to go to the uh, the actual live map here. Okay, are we back on the web page? Yes, no? Everybody yes. can see my web page? Okay. So this is a food bank growers web page. And what we did with this one is we added garden maps here. And under garden maps, I just put a static map over here, although you can embed the map on here. I think we can click on that one now and it'll go to the map. But here's the food bank growers, the big map of 100. I'm sorry, food, Feed Jeffco is the big map of 100 sites. And the food bank growers is the map you see on the left. So I was able to make two big maps out of this. And the beauty of this is that once you have a site, let's take one of these guys, say a Quimper, and you can embed that map onto, this is our website, website, but now we've just jumped off and we went to the green map site where this information is. So it's opened up a whole new window in the green map section. But I don't have to recreate it on my website. It's all right here. Again, change this information once, it updates my website, it updates the green map, it updates the wellness project. So it's a real fun way once you get going to keep things current. And look how nice Mary's photos look. So this is one of the secrets is, you know, that you've got people pictures, you've got produce pictures. Mm -hmm. It really helps tell the story. Right. And getting this, getting a map so you can find things fast. And then also these icons up here. So there's a community garden, it's a gathering site, it wants volunteers, of course, and it has greenhouses. And I'll get into the, the greenhouse thing here in just a second. So let me go back to, let me get this out of the way so I can get to my top bar. All right. So if we go to, let's go to the food bank. Well, yeah, food bank more scrap. So it's for the food bank growers. So now she's on the mapping platform. On the mapping platform itself. And once we're here, uh, before I go into the map, I'm going to show you the, the secret square down here in the bottom left-hand corner. If you plop that open, you're going to get to this page that you saw that Wendy was showing else, elsewhere. But it loads up every single site. So I have all 85 sites, little snapshots of each one. This is really powerful, folks. When you print out all these pages and in your a static situation where people want to know what it looks like and you put this up, they go, wow, I had no idea this much was going on out there. So it makes, again, the intangible tangible. And I got a little blurb on each one. And the other secret part of this, let me go back now. I'll get this out of my way. Garden maps. Um, let's see. Go to the food bank itself. Um, yours. All right. So now we can look at um, all the icons that are in there. And let's say this is an example I used before, the greenhouse example. This is for future. So if we all of a sudden things happen and we got to know where our resources are in town, we know where our resources are. And we can just click on that and it'll tell us what garden it's at. If you start embedding these things in the background first, um, then when things hit, you don't need them right now, but in the future, you already have them there. Or let's say you wanted to do, um, uh, let's say food security, or you had a separate campaign that maybe the government is running or somebody else who wants to make sure we have um, uh, let's say, uh, the square foot of growing range or something like that. You could put that in there and maybe give it a secret word. I'll say secret word. Whoops, secret word. Whatever it is, embed that into your copy. And then when you search with that secret word, see it doesn't match any of those features, it will find all the gardens that have that word. So let's say food bank instead. There's all the places that work with food banks or exchange with food banks or have something to do with food banks. So you can see how you can apply this on the slide mm -hmm. without being in, in someone's face going forward. Mm -hmm. This is more future thinking as a strategy. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Well, let me go back here to this one last thing, back to this. Oops, let's provide paradigm. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. I got to go on this one. Um, Here and there, you might find a little error. You can always report it, um, but sometimes that also goes away in about a second. So, right. 
in that case, I was I had actually I went to the Safari browser instead of the the uh, Firefox browser. So okay, we so we're back. Much. We're back on this one again, and shows all. If you hit this little icon instead of the other one, now you get a list. And once again, you can see everything at a glance. So if you're working with city officials and other gardens, they can see at a glance who they are, how they're seen with their first little blurb that they want or not, and get some okay on that. And the icons that they're using over here, how many pictures they have. From a management point of view, it just gives you a way to quickly see what you have going on without going crazy. And if you're logged in and your map, you can edit right there. So it's a very quick way to take a look at and maybe update. Uh, you know, you've heard some things have changed. So it, so it makes it much faster. There's search tools there as well to find the one you're looking for. And that's Correct. really so helpful I, when you have a lot of sites on your map. Right. So, really helpful. So that is the way that that works. And then um, it's just nice in case of the schools, the schools are there at maybe a green school or they're, they're doing farming stuff there. This particular school now has this huge section just for produce, which they're growing just for their school. It's massive. So it's going to be a great demo site going forward. All righty. So that's about all I have. Do you have any questions on that? That I'll turn it back to Wendy. Um, thank you, Mary. That was really, really, I hope that gave you all a good impression of how you manage a mapping project in a similar way to how you manage a food growing program. There's, you know, a, a science to it. Most people have not done what Mary did and really analyzed how to put the information together in a very consistent way. But you can mm -hmm. see how much that's added to the project to take that approach. Um, so, I wonder, and I see Enid has joined us. We mentioned Enid's map already um, that she was making, making in West Fife. We can do, we have about 15 minutes, so we can have a discussion. We can look at technology more. We can watch a one minute video. Uh, what do you all wanna do? I guess I'm interested in more in the technology um, aspect. Um, you know, how to, I, it, that, Mary showed us this spreadsheet um, and, um, you know, I, I'm always interested in just knowing like how you get the, how you load things up, so to speak. All right, shall we do a quick, quick show of that then? Um, let me go back to share screen a moment. Let's see, if we're here. All right, we're gonna, um, skip the movie for now, but um, when you're on the platform, there's this is the top bar of the platform. So about is where you find all your tutorials. So that's your first place to look for help. I'm happy to to walk you through this individually too. That's no problem at all. Okay. Um, browse yeah. has your uh, all the maps, all the types of um, icon sets and sites mm -hmm. available so you can see everything. Propose a site, you can actually click and add a site that way, but there's an easier way and manage. Once you're logged in, you can manage all of these things on your map as you go. And the only other place that's really interesting is over here and there's some updates and information on the um, you know, the license, which is an open license. You can set your own license on the map. That's what I'm working on next week. So I made a community garden map. And when I, and I, let's see, hopefully this will come up. Can you see my, my the campaigns have come up here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. So I have already, I'm next week, I'm doing a workshop at a, um, um, oops. I had all this set up. I know I did. Anyways, um, let me see where we are here. Let's see. Um, while that's coming in, I'm going to pull this up. Um, this is the map itself. And I'm going to take us to my map. So um, stop that a second. 
Okay, so all of my maps are here. Hello, I'm gonna turn that one off, okay. Um, oops. Okay, now we're ready. So all of my maps are on here. So, and I have way too many because I keep <laughs> demonstrating, but also New York has had made several. So those are all my maps. So they're all here in an easy to manage place. We're going to look at the community garden map. There's three little dots and right there it will say view features. So let's see what is already on the map. I think I have put four sites on to get ready for this community garden event. It's a little slow loading with all these images, um, as you mm -hmm. can see. Okay, so I've put four sites on that already appeared on other maps. And um, we also made a little survey for it. So to, the, to me, the easiest way is to go to this little campaign or snap to the map. We're, we're changing the name of this thing. So here's a campaign. And what's nice about the campaign is it already knows where your map is. So it's, and it knows where you are. So um, if you're using this on your device, you could just use your current location. I've made this, right now I've made the mapping area this whole part of the world, thinking some of you might want to add a site to it today. When I go to the community garden event, I'm going to reduce it back to New York City. So I'm about New York there. Let's see where we are, how close as we come in to a, a garden location. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that is close enough here. I'm going to put it somewhere down in Brooklyn and I'm going to hit save pin location. So we're, we're somewhere here. And if it's not quite right, you can adjust it again. Um, what's mm -hmm. the name of this garden? I'm going to call it Hattie uh, Cardigan. I think that's the name of a map. Garden Cardigan. And this is one of the original, uh, oops, I'm still forgetting the T, original gardens here. What makes it special? It's got chickens. Wow. And um, <laughs> it's uh, got a fab uh, with, with a great um, nursery for pollinator plants. So they actually, help lots of other gardens at this garden's pollinators. And, you know, if you have a typo, you can fix it later. Um, you can add web links, et cetera. You can write as much here and you can go back later and put more on. And I'm gonna say this is as, um, let's see, it's got an edible landscape. It's got farm animals and it's a senior friendly site. It's all wheelchair accessible. It's got a greenhouse. And let's see, uh -huh. I can have a picture on my desktop. And let's see, I think I've stuck one here that's, uh-oh. Uh-oh, we may pick a random picture, folks. Um, there's a random picture. So we've got a, oh, it's a, UR, it's a <laughs> QR code, sorry about that, but it's random. You can make, if you're in the field, you might wanna downscale it. If you're not on Wi-Fi, it will hold this until you are on Wi-Fi, so you don't lose it. Um, so I'm just submitting it, and I'll show you now how it looks on my map. So we're back to my map. I'm going to refresh this, and here's that site I just added. And oops, right there. Oop, with a cute QR code. <laughs> I want to edit it, right? I know I have a typo. If you're doing this with other people, you, you can make it so people can see it's been added, but they can't click it and open it and read it until somebody has approved it. So in this case, you can just say, um, um, we love this garden. And you can be more articulate. You can include the, like Mary does, the hours, who it serves, if it has a overarching, whatever you like, but just save it. <laughs> and so right now it says community garden first, but, but I actually think that it has farm animals 
is more important. So I just drag that one right over and that's now the symbol that will appear on the maps. If I wanted to appear on multiple maps, I can add more here. So oh. I have a whole list of other maps that it could appear on very quickly. So um, I'll put it on the New York map, save. And here's geometry. Now this is in case if you want to make it a route so um, rather than a spot. So I'm going to turn this just so you could see it into a whole district around that garden. Save. And I don't know that I have the right icon for that. So it might not work properly, but let's see. Okay. So we can always um, assume you can ignore all this stuff down here. And this is now on the map. So let's go back and look at the map. Community Gardens in New York. Oh, did I publish it? I forgot to hit publish. So wait a second. Um, let me go back to here. So the last thing you need to do, see that little green thing there? It's pending. So if I edit it one more time, and you can see this happens pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, over here, it's pending. On the left, I mean the right, I need to make it public and save. Okay, and I can change the author if I want, etc. And you know what? I'm going to put on here edible landscape. I'm going to make that the new lead icon. And now let's look at community gardens. And here's here's one of the, because I made the mapping area so big. You have to pull in. Um, normally, did you notice how Mary's map, when every time she pulled it up, it was just her map, or just how she wanted it? You do that by setting the mapping thing. So the map I just added, whoop, the site I added, where is it? It's going to come in right around here in just a second. Um, I hope. <laughs> That's not it, right? No. OK. All right, well, give it a minute and see if I did it right. Oh, you know what? I messed it up by not giving it a lines and area icon. So one moment. Um, we can do that. And I'm going to make it a point again. So we don't have that issue. It's a little tricky to do lines and area. There's only certain icons that let you do that. And I forgot to look that up in advance, but I can show you where to find it. Sorry, we changed the geometry back to a spot. Okay, save. Okay, now it should be on the map. We're still, there we go. Oop. Um, where's New York? Wait. <laughs> I mean, all right, so there's our new spot on the map. There we go. Edible landscape is showing up first. All right, with that great picture. <laughs> but that's how you put sites on the map. Um, and there's another way you can do it that I'll show you very quickly. Um, I hope, all right, let's say there's a garden right here. I'm holding down the control key and I'm clicking on the map. Oop. Am I? One second. Well, it does work. <laughs> Let me come in a little closer. Okay. You, I think you have to wait till everything loads in. Oh, there we go. Propose a site. And it's going to take me right to the form where I can fill it out again. It's already got the location. It already says what map it is. We're going to call this a test garden. And we're going to write it's growing. Boom. And quickly add a photo because we like, we know where they are. <laughs> this time I'm not putting on a. Um, I have a green photo right here. Okay, there we are, greens. 
and then we choose the icons. And so in this case, this map has the food icons added. So I'm going to say this is organic food. And we've got also permaculture going on here. And you can add any of these other icons. So here is the composting icon. I'm going to add um, from justice and activism. We're going to call it a, a volunteer site. And you can add is up to, we recommend about eight is the maximum, but you can add more if you want. And um, I'm going to submit it. And then the second screen that comes up, oh, it says it was saved. Okay, and it's awaiting a review. So I will go back to that map and back to here. And there's that new site. And I'm going to edit it and make it public. So we do this in a way, um, it doesn't know who's, when you hit that propose a site, it doesn't know who's doing it. So this takes an extra second. And now it's public, saved, and it's also on the map. So that was pretty quick. I can show you how to set up a new map if you want. It's also very, very fast. It's annoying that this is um, zoomed out, but that's because, do you all want to try it? I have a question real quick. Um, okay. Instead of finding your location on the map, is there a way to plug in an address? Yes, um, you can do it that way when you, um, so for example, if you hit this proposal site, pick a location on the map, you could do it this way. It's the, um, it's the other tool. It's the, uh, let me take you to the campaigns. This tool will let you put in an address, I believe. Maybe it doesn't. Mary, have you done it that way? Um. No, <laughs> that Have wasn't. You, I don't know if Enid is still here. There have been a lot of campaigns. Here's the one we're working with. Let's see. Um, I'm here, Wendy. Sorry, can't get my my Have you? Started. I haven't done it that way, no. No, and we Enid haven't really run a campaign. Okay, so you can uh, change, and you can choose manually on the map or by address. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it allows all of those options. I'll stop sharing now for a moment. And since we're already at an hour and I don't want to keep people too long, is there any other questions that people have right now? I know lots of questions. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Just looking forward to getting started. Yeah. 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 Michelle, did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to ask. So say you were following um, a geographic feature so that the main part of the map was an area or a line, for example, a river course. Is there any specific tool that can make that feature highlighted rather than just relying on the open source map itself? Yes. And so I'm going to pull up the map that shows you the lines and areas. So you can see which icons are set up for geometry. It's not all of them. You can also take any icon and say, I want this to be have geometry. And it, it's explained in the tutorial how to do that. It's, it takes a couple of seconds once you know how to do it. Um, but if you have a map my ride or map my walk type app, there's one called Strava that's very popular. You can download the file it makes. It's called GPX, and you can upload that in a second. So that's how the fastest way to map, like here's a walking tour or um, uh, explanation. OK, so let me find you. Here's lines and areas. So this is the one map. And I'll put the URL in the chat for you. Um, this has every kind of line that we have set up an area on this map. And some of them, like here's an area, for example, and you can see it changes when you click it and it's a whole historic shopping district. But there's different kinds of lines, whether share, they're- uh, Share your screen. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. That's a, sorry. <laughs> Oops, thank you. Um, 
So here's, I just clicked this box and it changed. Here's another one. This is a, a historic district around Washington Square Park. So the front of this map has, oops, close that little box. This has the chart that shows which, um, come on, let's see if it's going to do it. There we go. So this is the, I'll get you the shortcut to this page. So you have it for later, but in a second it will come in and it shows all the different types of lines and routes. I mean, areas and routes. So I get these mixed up. So it's routes and area, lines and polygons that you can do. So <laughs> it makes it possible to add these and eventually, oh, there it is. It's coming in at the top. So only certain ones, cultural zone or tour, historic area, traditional place. Some of these have been selected. And like I said, you can add more. Maybe for food, we need to create some um, farm walk or I don't know, would it be an edible walking tour? Who has that? I went on one in Stockholm and it was really fun. And I ate a lot of things I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> but you can see there's some are unpaved bike trail or public transportation, walking route uh, or protected area, et cetera. So I'll stop the share again. And I'll put this as the URL to the lines and area. And um, it's a little, you know, it's a little learning curve there, but it's actually really fun to do. And it acts like any other site, so you can add photos or sounds. Sounds, you can take people speaking in another language, telling a story, things like that. It looks like Brett has to go. He's waving. I was just going to show the film that Brett and I took part in. Do you guys have one minute? Should I show it? You can run if you need to, Brett. I understand. Let me find that for you. Um, well, she's looking for that. Also, the green maps can be made multiple languages. Uh huh. Yes, we've tested languages that go backwards and upside down. They all work. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, okay, so this is. Let's see if we can make it play. <laughs> So we're at the Jersey City Green Map and Farm in the City visioning session. And now we've gotten to the point where everybody's standing around the maps of the different wards of the city. There's green map icons just starting to pop up on the map where people know where things exist or have ideas about what there. There's um, sheets up for people to add, information, contacts, more ideas. This is after about a two hour session. We're just moving the tables out of the way where people have been writing ideas, not only, oops, not only on the tables, but also on the wall. So there's a whole post it tree up here. And the circle is coming back together. So um, uh, that was the little, um, <laughs> you could see an engagement process can be really lively. And we had people there from, like you were saying, Nan, your, this Jersey City has five wards and people are very much connected to their ward. They um, might never visit ward two if they live in ward five. And this was a way to bring people together. One of the best outcomes from it is the city decided, okay for beekeeping, okay for chickens, and okay to sell food grown on city-owned lots. They mm -hmm. also changed, they do an, every year a tree giveaway for backyard trees, and they changed it to fruit trees after this event. So those were some of the policy changes that happen and Sustainable Jersey continues on and they have great workshops and things. Um, so um, if any, are there any other questions right now or comments or ideas, any feedback? We'd love feedback. <laughs> yeah. 
Wendy, I think I tried to um, add something to your map, seeing it here. Yes. But, um, <laughs> I think I forgot to put the location. <laughs> and, now, and now I don't know how to do that because okay. I've submitted it. So I don't know if, if there's anything turned up at your side. I'll check it while we're talking. That's a good, good, good thing. Um, um, so Wendy, what kind of so Wendy? Yes, I'm here. Oh, what kind of support um, do you offer? And you also mentioned tutorials. There's a ton of tutorials. There's short mm -hmm. videos, like two minute videos on how to do special certain things. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, a quick start guide. I think that's the best place to begin. And then there's mm -hmm. a more detailed tutorial if you want to really get into the weeds of things. It's all on mm -hmm. that about page on the upper left. Mm -hmm. um, and the team, you know, this platform was created by an incredible developer team in Berlin. And you can hire them. And also Hannah Clinch is in Scotland to work with your group on the community engagement piece, on the strategy, on any aspect of this that you want help with. They've built apps for people. They've helped people add their own base maps, different things like that. So, and they, there may be a subscription model coming up if you want to help support the development of all this. Right till, till date, everything has been free, but open source is actually a little hard to manage without money year after year. So we're mm -hmm. coming to um, think about, yes, it's gonna be free to make a map, but certain kinds of help um, we'll ask people to contribute to. And we're mm -hmm. you know definitely scaling it so it's very flexible and, um, but that, you know, that support is optional and I'm here available to help people um, anytime because we, I know it's tricky and sometimes just a few minutes of help opens the gates to like a really successful project. And I want to, we of course would like things to be successful and happy on your end. The map, Mary, some of the hard part Mary can tell you is getting the word out. How do people find out about the map? And this is something to think about with having an event, you know, doing a press release or, um, you know, working with a local media and social media to help people find out about it. Mary, as she mentioned, has made a poster of all those sites. So she, what's your tool, Snagit? Snagit, yep. yeah. So she uses great a app. tool. And it, it makes a PDF of the entire page, even if you can't see the whole page. So, and so when you end up with a big stack of those little boxes, she could take it out and make a nice poster that she can bring to farmers markets and community events. So how do you meet people where they are? Is, you know, always, how do you get them talking about it? We've also made, oh, I don't have one right here, but we've made business cards that have a QR code on then that's an easy thing for people to take and look at later. So technology is a little tricky sometimes. So not everybody's got the same tools. And, and so, yeah. And then, so the next step, um, do you provide everybody with a login to the, um, the open green map? You get to make your own. So if oh. you go to the mapping platform, you know, put the URL in. Um, you can make go in the upper right hand corner and make a sign in. Mm -hmm. and we really encourage you not to share your password with your teammates. It's better to have each person log in and manage their own. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, let me finish putting this in. And then you can go right to the about and start trying to work with it, or um, you know ask for help, etc. In its project is an example of a project that's been able to um, afford having support. And um, I think that's been helpful, I hope so. Um, there's the, the login. We have another website at greenmap.org and it's got all kinds of stories in it. And will these two websites ever come together? We shall see. <laughs> I, I just, Wendy, I just want to stress to everybody again, the big thing that came over with me is the privacy issue. And then you can keep all the stuff behind closed doors until it's ready to go live. 
out because that freaks mm -hmm. out a lot of people, you know, when they're just trying to work with something and get it up there how they like it. So that's always you always your, your option. Then you can have your debut. It's it's kind of newsworthy, so it might get picked up in local press. Um, you, when I showed that picture of Enid's map, there was you had a huge event when you launched your Clack Manninshire map, right? And yeah, yeah, we did. And with the um, the the, the food map, um, we had a we had a great event for that. I don't know if you can see that, but we um, almost produced a cookery book. Oh, cookbook! Yeah, yeah. and it's it's um fantastic um colorful production the uh, it was actually the the local authority or the fife council that that were um backing this project and they produced a wonderful book from a series of workshops that we did not only the mapping workshops but also discussion groups around food and what people like to eat and people sharing recipes and also savvy shopper workshops about you know how to get good you know affordable food and where you can resource um, healthy food. And so all the different workshops combined, um, we produce not only this lovely, um, in fact, if I maybe post, post you a copy, Wendy, I think you'd love it. And, um, and then we also had the online map as well. So it was a, it was a great piece of work. And um, thanks, Wendy, for all your support as ever. Well, thank you too, Enid. Um, Enid's a wonderful photographer as well, so I'm sure your pictures are showing. <laughs> Actually, I don't have many in that. They had a, they had commissioned a photographer specially. Um, I was just doing. I was the mapper rather than the photographer, but she did it. Heather, she did a beautiful job. But um, I'll 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 post you one, Wendy, if you you give me the the best address to send it to. All right, I'll figure that out. Um, <laughs> I'll definitely be in touch. So, um, Liana, I don't know if you have anything you want to add because food mapping is a very different situation in Cuba. Um, sí, el, um, in Cuba, um, a difficult uh, open grid map because um, connection is connection is very bad, very bad. It's impossible, <laughs> impossible. Uh, but open grid map is very, very, very good. <laughs> um, many possibilities. And in this moment, in Cuba, don't count. But esperamos que in future. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. The experiences, some excellent. Oh. Excellent for. <laughs> Thank you, Liana. You know, the, the food. Aliuska, Aliuska, um, right. uh, uh, can speak about, about uh, this map. Aliuska, no sé, parece que no está. Oh, here she comes. Sí. <laughs> um, uh, hello. Uh, thank you for the experience that you gave today. But in Cuba, they are so difficult to to use this platform. Uh, it's very easy. It's very difficult because there is a so powerful, and for us, it's difficult. Uh, I try in to do um, an exercise in this, but was very difficult. But um, we have uh, in Cuba now we have um, a government line that is to, is, is uh, creating a, a very good, uh, I don't know how to say, a very good uh, situation from the garden and for the community garden in Cuba. And we have a lot of work uh, to show, but uh, only in papers, in notes from the, from the platform of the Open Green Map. That is a situation in Cuba, you know? Yeah. Uh, we are going to to do Aliu, everything yeah. that we can to do, but that is uh, the situation. Aliu, the real situation in Cuba is it? De los so, iconos que tenemos iconos nuevos que uh, los podemos uh, también compartir. Even uh, we have when, uh -huh. even when we have um, um, 
and experience in Loposito, we have a, a new icon, icon, no? I don't know. Sí. Uh, um, uh, related to uh, lombricultura. I don't know in English how to say this. It is it, a kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't know uh, how you can say uh, lombricultura. But uh, only in papers uh, we can. Um, other icon is a um, familiar, uh, familiar garden. And okay, uh -huh. garden. familiar garden too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, because of the scale of the the scale of the of the garden in Cuba, they are so small, and we can uh, we can consider it that like, like this. Huh? I don't know. That, that is a dual situation. We have a lot of problem with the internet. Uh, Zoom, it is a, a luxury for us. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. difficult. It's about a day's pay to be on the internet one hour, and we can't. <laughs> We can't imagine what that means <laughs> for people, but we also know that the maps that have been made on paper in Cuba are very powerful and have led to many positive changes in people's living conditions. And I know we'll be able to figure out this technology hurdle one day, maybe with WhatsApp, okay. et cetera. One of these days we'll get it worked out. Does, um, Thank you for both being here. I really appreciate it. And I hope it leads to good things in every part of the world, whether we have lots of resources that are just unevenly distributed, like most of us, right? Or, okay. Yeah, in this case. Anybody have any last comment they want to add before we stop? I really appreciate that we have a team from the Northwest and two people great from the UK here, two from Cuba. We've got Pennsylvania and we've got upstate New York. Yay. Thank you all for your contributions today. Ah, vermiculture. That's vermiculture. The one. <laughs> so is anybody else growing worms? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. They're, we love the worms and they're so delicious. Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, all right. But uh, thank you all. You know, food is sustenance. It's our connection, right? It's our three times a day commitment to sustainability. And um, everything we're doing together, I think, will really help a lot of people. So special thanks to Mary for sharing her expertise and her methodology. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mary. And um, thank you all for providing great examples and questions. And you can call me as well. Uh, you'll have it on the um, my contact information there. You can call me or chat with me anytime and I'll, whatever. Oops, am I still muted? No, and, you're uh, not. Mary's okay. extremely generous with her knowledge. So take advantage of it. Maybe you've seen, notice that, Diana, that you can, how incredible she is, a force of nature. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, Wendy. Thank you. So glad you Thank were here. You. Yeah, sorry I was late. I thought it was Thank started everybody. before, so, but it was just by chance I, was, I saw your email. And I was an hour early. Just <laughs> <laughs> That's a bye. Ciao. Ciao. Bye-bye.